Welcome to the Rocket League competition here at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup 2024 presented by McDonald's of North Texas. In the semifinals, let's meet and greet to the stage our two featured teams. At the number one seed, Ball State University. The roster, Wova, Oath, Ga, Luigi. At the number five seed, the University of Akron. Patty, Bullseye, Tristan, Miliota Gamer. Now, please welcome back to the stage for the pre-match showdown, your host, Hercules. Yeah, yeah, get it loud. Yeah, thank you, Sep. Thank you. Guys, it's Rocket League time. Get loud. Come on, let's go. We've been waiting for this all day. I know, I know. Valorant took a long time. They had the three map. They, they wanted to be the stars, but it's Rocket League's time. Boys, Welcome to the stage. You can take your seats, but I gotta get one of each of you to come and hang out with me here. You guys can come on out. Come and hang out with me. I got some questions for y'all. All right. For those of you in the crowd who might not know these people, welcome. We've got the side of Akron Esports and we got Ball State. Now, if you pay attention to CRL in the past, you boys on paper are usually number one seed headed into pretty much everything at times. You're, you're pretty up there. You're in like those top three spots a lot of the times. Ball State, you were always on a come up, but now you're number one seed here on your first major land. I gotta start out with probably the most basic question of all time, but how does that feel for you guys as a team? Honestly, it feels really great. Um, after nationals for CRL, we've been really pumped for a LAN, and unfortunately, no, no CRL happened during the spring. But just like nationals, I think we're just going to really beat Akron and uh, make it an easy series. Easy series, beat Akron. What do you got to say to that? May the fourth be with you. <laughs> I kind of want to just end it there. <laughs> that was too good at that point. Listen, boys, let's get a handshake going on before I send you off. Have fun. Good luck to the both of you. Guys, we've got a huge matchup underway. Put your hands together. We've got Taco and Bass on the mic. Boys, take it away. Thank you, Hercules. Sako, we are back. And we yeah. are back not only here as the casters, obviously getting ready for the match, but we are back with a rematch. Years in the making. Too Fast getting his chance at revenge against Tristan and Akron. This time's a little bit different, though. A little bit. I mean, the rosters change. The competitive spirit remains the same. We have Too Fast joining the coaching model because, unfortunately, he didn't redshirt. He can't keep playing on and on. He's not going to a grad program yet. I mean, he could always make a return, but he's facing off against Tristan, who is seemingly ageless within the collegiate realm. But he is, of course, still kind of that talismanic player at the front of Akron. So incredibly talented. The original player that we argued maybe we shouldn't allow players on orgs or players near that RLCS level to play. And now it's almost like it's the norm. And yet, despite everyone else catching up, Akron's still running away with a lot of series, which is why they're here. I mean, on top of that, you want to try to make the argument, oh, we can't have professional players. Um, Okay, then Akron literally can't play at all. All three of their players made it into the professional circuit RLCS as a team. They were the first team in collegiate history to, as a trio, qualify for a professional circuit. If that doesn't explain the level at which this Akron team has been playing lately, I don't know what does. That being said, though, Ball State, they might not have all three of their players consistently making RLCS, but they also might have the best underdog run of any team in the history of ever. 
Yes, the CRL Nationals was a little bit weird in last semester in that basically if you finished the top of league play, you skipped a bunch of games. You went straight more or less to the upper semifinals, whereas if you were in lowers like Ball State and also this Akron team were, then you had to go through at least four series to be able to catch up to them, all best of fives up until really you got much, much deeper. So Akron actually did fall in that initial engagement. So yes, we talk about the history in the long term, but also this is very much recent memory. This is a beef slowly forming. I mean, th th these are two of the most prominent teams in collegiate Rocket League right mm -hmm. now, and it kind of feels like we could see this turn into sort of the El Clasico. I know we keep yes. trying to use that. I feel like Rocket League, <laughs> like, Rocket League wants to assign that to every single, like, level. They want collegiate professional play. Every region has to have an El Clasico. And although this may not be that yet, I feel like it might still be Boise versus Northwood, mm -hmm. which has consistently been number one and number one of East and West going against each other. Ball State are trying to take that crown. And I'll be real, they take a win here at CCC. I think they are holding that crown. And that's is really all what it's about. You Yes, you have these matches where there's bragging rights and there's quals and you're going through all these different things. After all, Ball State got here originally because they were one of our top four seeds getting in through the CECC Midwest Championship, whereas Akron kind of crawled on in as a very high-seeded team, but through the MAC Conference Championship. So being able to qualify through, they don't get that, quick, that peak advantage coming through, specifically the CEC qual, but they still make it here because, again, this Acker team is the best in Ohio, and they're a team that really likes to take it to everybody and reminding them that, yes, they were the GOAT team all the way back then, and yet they're still always in the conversation. They they are one of the most impressive teams in terms of both their abilities, their resiliency, their mental fortitude. I mean, just watch Tristan. For any of you guys who are you know out in the crowd right now, pay attention to the way that Tristan's face just does not change. It doesn't matter if they get scored on. doesn't matter if they score. He will be just completely locked in the entire series. Mm -hmm. He's been this way since the beginning. He's going to be this way now. And honestly, I'm hoping that we do get a series where both teams are completely locked in. We talked about this. This might be one of the closest matches we have the entire event. The finals might not even be this close considering the fact that these two teams are some of the hottest teams in the collegiate space right now. Yes, and on top of that, they're also rolling pretty deep with support. I know these are definitely or oh, yeah. organizations that really, I say organizations, this might be in a school because it does kind of travel with a posse. I know Ball State could hear them across the venue despite being in the pit as well as Boise, but Akron certainly knows Slatches has a lot of nice supporters both here and away, I'm sure, watching in the chat. So definitely something to keep in mind because these are storied places. Ball State is a little bit newer to the scene, but they're slowly growing in their program. They're getting those top four finishes within national championships. And this is just another chance to prove that that run to the lower bracket is not a fluke. And they're showing it. They played against Maryville and they it was not close. That was a sweep for them leading up to the semifinal. I believe both of these teams actually swept through to their semifinal. 4-0, 4-0 on both sides, which like you said, momentum on their side as well as also the crowd. So crowd, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. I'm all the way in the back. I'm not out in the crowd with you guys right now, but we want to see if we can actually hear you. So first off, let's go for the Akron crowd. Akron, let me hear you. Let me see if I can hear you in the back. Oh, we can. We can. All right. All right. Ball State. Let me hear ya. There we go. We can hear both of them all the way back here. That's it. You have your headset on, you can still oh, yeah. hear them. We have to snake through several hallways to get out to the crowds. So the fact that we can hear it means that everyone's locked in, and that's why I'm so excited that we are moments away from kicking this one off. Finally, we're shedding the shackles, really, as casters and entertainers of best of fives. We're into that BO7 territory, where it really should be, because we get to see the strategic adjustments. These are not online, where the coaches might may or not may not be in the calls. They are right next to them, over their shoulders, able to pay, pinpoint any mistakes, any fixes they have, and I feel like that tactical adjustment from those teams is just as important as how the players are playing because we know it's all well and good to play backstage in the players room all the way in the back end or in the pit but when you're on the main stage the light shining on you the crowd staring right at your faces seeing those shaky hands potentially on the controllers between hand it gets to you a bit and so these players i mean we say lock in but it's another level of concentration and mental fortitude you have to access and this is why we also highlight the coaches so much as well it definitely kind of feels like these two teams are going to find themselves in i would say hot water at some point in the series. there's no way we see a 4-0 here there's no way we see a one-sided series we know this is going to go back and forth and that's where that mental fortitude is going to come in that's where coaches like too fast are going to come in and that's where we're going to have to see both these sides really get prepared unfortunately though it's going to be a little while until we get to actually see them play we're gonna have to go to a quick break but when we return rocket league action here at the ccc land here in north texas brought to you by mcdonald's of north texas we'll see you soon We are back. 
with more Rocket League here at CECC. We got our semifinals. Daco, we have been hyping this one up, but it is time for the hype to turn into action. We've got our semifinal, a best of seven between Ball State and Akron. And as we've said, the stakes are not only high to make it to the grand finals here for the LAN, but on top of that, it is history. Two teams which have been waiting for this moment. Yes, and this is, of course, the bragging rights. We keep mentioning the tragedy that the CRL circuit is a little bit off. We don't have that national championship this time around. So this is the de facto championship that teams have been working for this entire year, playing through different circuits, different leagues, and it all culminates in a competition like this. So being able to play in the semifinal is so tough because, really, this could be a, a grand final. I think if yeah. we told people that, we could definitely trick you into thinking it's a grand final. But no, we still have to build up to that next one Congrats to Boise for being able to pull off that win. They come from behind at one point in that oh. series as well. So it'll be a banger no matter who comes out on top here. And to be honest, that's why I'm happy we're not on the analyst desk because I keep going back and forth in my head on this series. Dude, we talked about what our top four was coming into this one. You and I both gave predictions. And one of the teams that we mentioned was LCU. LCU, unfortunately, due to the way that they drew their bracket, had to face off against Boise in the very first round of playoffs. Or actually, I think maybe top eight, not top 12, excuse me, for Boise, their first round of playoffs. It's one of these things where, unfortunately, the reality is, is that if you slip up for even one game in those group stages, it changes the way you're going to get into playoffs drastically. Mm -hmm. It changes who you're going to match up against drastically. And a lot of people could probably look at this one and go, I can't believe we are getting this in the semifinals, but this is just how it went. Both of these teams have found themselves a matchup to remember. As we stated, the winner of this goes on to face Boise. It would be a rematch for Ball State. Ball State, the last time we did have CRL playoffs, though, they ended up getting eliminated by Boise State in that third place match for Akron. I don't know if they've ever actually played this Boise team. I think being able to uh, go through those competitions means you're going to play them eventually in the nationals. But, yeah, we have not really been able to see that too much. This is definitely a team that you want to scrim, be able to uh, get to the pit, get to the practice rooms backstage, and be able to play against them. But ultimately, yeah, you might know that they might never run into in the bracket. And that's really the pure tragedy of trying to seed from these groups into the brackets that we miss out on those championship games, or those caliber games where we're saying, well, this is kind of a toss-up. We don't have prior experience. You go to the Liquipedia pages and you're saying, hey, why is there no prior matches so this is where it gets into this interesting aspect where we have to take on basically our internal knowledge of these teams and try to apply it to something that is vaguely abstract we know how these team two, two teams played but it's like chemistry within rocket league you cross two elements together and you don't really know how it's gonna go you just have this vague approximation at times i will say this much though uh i can tell you at least a little bit of the chemical reaction that's about to unfold it's going to be a lot of pre-jumping biggest thing that i think people have talked about a lot with this ball state team and why they've been so effective as a team and so problematic for so many rosters to really wrap their head around is they are one of the most aggressive offenses I have ever seen. Be on the lookout for pre-jumps and players just literally lurking on the ceiling in offense. That's not something you're normally going to see as players just literally waiting there for a pass to come out to offense and then for them to score. Ball State are so quick on transition, so lethal in the offense that they create. It's been a huge problem for the entirety of the collegiate scene as I've spoken with many coaches, many players, and they all pretty much say the same thing. We don't know how to read this Ball State team. Mm -hmm. It, it could be a difficult thing, particularly when the players, in a way, sometimes can be a little bit of wild cards. I would argue that Patty is someone that if anyone follows them from Akron on oh, socials, yeah. does a lot of eating challenges. It basically just goes to the restaurant and say, hey, I want the hardest thing you have to eat, tie me, I don't care. And he beats it a majority of the time. So I think what you should take from that is if you want to know about his play style, he's like genuinely psychotic. He's yep. not fit for regular everyday life. And so therefore, when you see him play, he is all over the ball. It's really just they let him off the leash and say, hey, cause havoc and will follow through. And when it comes to Royal State, I feel like they're a more organized team in that they have a system that they yeah. stick with, but my goodness, if it isn't the most effective way to be able to break down these teams. People sometimes really just look lost against them. Uh, it's really hard to play a good series against Ball State. If you do, you're going to have to go the distance. Again, they are not a team that are easily beaten, and they are not a team that is easily going to just kind of fall off. They will find games where they're off, but they will bounce back again. Shout out to Coach Too Fast for being able to do so. On the other side, for Akron, I do want to shout out their coach as well. They've been doing incredible stuff with the program for years now at this point. Uh, again, two awesome programs. It's awesome to see both of these guys here at this semifinal stage and honestly I want to see the next stage I want to see Patty do another eating challenge I missed out on that once I went to Ohio to cast them in a collegiate yes. championship they actually ended up winning shout out to Akron for that um, and I think he ate like a five pound hamburger or something yeah, there, like yeah, literally like that and I remember we I was talking to Huntley I was talking to him about it and he's like yeah, yeah yeah if you want to come and follow us afterwards um, and then myself and my co-caster shout out Sleegy never saw them again so uh, I'm not missing that this time uh, shout out hey Akron if you do this again I'm following y'all uh, maybe 
maybe the crowd will follow too. We'll find out. You guys are going to follow us into game one of this best of seven. Ball State versus Akron. Winner moves on to the grand finals here in Texas at CECC. Taco. Let's find out who it is. And really, I mean, I can't get, wait to get into it. I'm hearing the player sounds. I'm Hear hearing it. the games, the Hear menuing. It. And so these players, they're locked in. They are starting to lean on forward. And we'll have to see how this one is really going to have to shake on through. After all, we said this is a grand final type matchup. And we're just getting blessed to see it only on day two of competition. Let's rock. Let's get this one started. Ball State versus Akron in a best of seven, like we have mentioned so many times here at this point. All we got to see is which team kind of hits the ground running. I think a big thing that we are going to see here is who's going to be the pop-off player for this Akron side. You and I have mentioned this before. Sometimes it's Patty, sometimes it's Tristan, sometimes it's Bullseye. Individual performances the main thing you're going to have to watch out for this Akron team. And that's exactly why it's one of my favorite things. To be able to see within this game in series in teams like this is that ultimately when you do have this system in place of saying, well, sometimes this player one pops up, sometimes player two pops up, and sometimes it's the third because they're all incredible players. That's really what the peak of CRL is about. It's not just getting a decent core. It's the entirety of the team that has to pop off. And I feel like that's why it's so hard to be able to choose a true favorite. And why I believe this game one is going to be incredibly nice. It is going to be a game that I think sets the tone for both sides. You're really going to have to figure out what type of game are you going to be playing, especially for Akron. Like you mentioned, if Akron has pop off player, you got to force them before the end figure out that DSU is, well, the most efficient offense we've ever seen, as they seem to be already. This is going to have to find a way to slow them down. Akron already trying to find a way to just to dodge these shots. That goes in from the bottom right. Player on the backboard. What happened? Now, this is all about finesse from OD. Understands that, yes, it might be on that backboard, but that means you're not going to be able to reach all the way down. Nice finish there from O. That's really the pop-off player. If you want to actually really force me there and hold me on the ledge and say, hey, you have to choose a player. Who is the player to watch? It is OD. He popped off so much, but let's next. Not forget about Woba right off the kickoff. Ball State doubling up. Why did you able to mention Woba? Because I was just about to say his name as well. He got the assist from the last play with Gold here. He is also the only returning player. He has basically had a rework in this last year, and Woba was the only one of their key players to return for this full year of competitive play. Because that last semester he was there. This semester, well, that makes sense. He's playing right now. The DSU team see a lot of changes. One thing to stay consistent, they are still really looking for right now it's oh within just about 90 seconds. Oh, and getting close back. Really going all in on that. It's somewhat surprising considering we we're very much in the early stages here, but at least they're getting a taste of offense and they've been locked in their half more or less for that first minute or so. I see that one from Tristan is Odin's gonna take that all the way around. That's a happy deflection. No, I can't read it. How about Wova taking it slow, looking for that 50 and though it will be guided to the sideline. This attack is still not over. Will pop up, Oath is there, just gonna try and shoot it in, but can't quite get up the ball in time, and Akron still happy with that, they might even be able to break out of their own half, or not, does, into the corner, for the next touch, and it's risky, get around Clova, and he's mad, he can shoot out to mid, well, hey, guess what, Oath's on the ceiling waiting for the shot, I can't believe this is happening on repeat, but this is why they do it, this effective offense that never relents. Yeah, watch how Oath plays this one, he knows he's not getting to it, so he immediately stays right in front, because he knows as long as that shot isn't target and it's directed at the car body of the goalkeeper that save is not going too far they don't have the momentum they don't have the boost really to get underneath it and launch that one to the sky or to the side that's really nice positioning again from ball state they have them right where they want them this one you gotta get back to can find a way to slow this team down we mentioned it before you do not want to let the success go off and just in case you don't want to cheat it you need to find ways to break out of your hack you need to find ways to sustain off and get their hack instead Oh, oh, the shot on target and in! And after they finally get the first chance at offense and they throw all the cards into offense. This is where I kind of want the tech check. Are the monitors on on the average side? Because they're really struggling to get to the midfield here. It seems like all these quick chances where Ball State sees an opportunity and says, I am not hesitating, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm just going to find my player downfield and... I have to say, it's not just that it's working, it's that the pushback from Akron is not quite there yet. It's like they're trying to come into this as a warm-up, they're stretching the hamstrings, they're stretching the wrists out, and they're saying, hey, we don't really have a chance here yet. And right when they do, Oath has a cover. That was a completely coordinated play. They used to have to keep Walker diving in, and they were doing so in a fearful fashion. It's just incredible that still somehow Doug is back here. Honestly, all the players are just stepping up right now. Doug might not be getting on the scoreboard all too often, but he does have two assists and some crucial 
saying it is over the top and off right now. Not surprising to see what a factor is within the first game. So, no. Folks, this is what we're warning you about. This is the team. When they are on, they take shut down. They are electric in this first game. Yeah, it's fine. And when they got here, they had to go through Maryville, which is no slouch of a team. That is a program, and obviously uh, a program that is well known in the Cleveland space for putting out winners and high competing teams. And yet, they were not able to stand up to this Ball State team. Maybe it's just them on this day, or maybe it's just their own system that works for them. And right now, it's working on both sides of the ball. That pass will not find a target back. So Akron, with a lot of space and a lot of time, is trying to take the board. But again, it's almost like the first touches are failing them, and that's half the battle. Part of the issue is that you're saying they have time, they have no time, but you can always expect a new blocker from CSU. They're really pressed back this year. They're fine to shoot for a team, but the action is taking the pace of their opponent and it disrupts them. And after this right now, the CSU are just not giving consecutive touches to Akron in any capacity. They don't want the leaders to get a play. They don't want to even get the chance to get one to demoralize and take them out of this series as much as they can here in this first game. They're doing a great job at so far. Scoreless, four minutes of play. BSU might even look for another goal to close this one out. There's a reason why half the game is played between your ears. You really have to make sure that you keep calm. And in games like this, half the time, the veterans are just going to kind of wave it off and say, that's fine. We didn't really come in fully prepared for what we were about to face, but you now we can make adjustments. That's really what it's about. And at this point, it really is all they can do. Act, get something for the morale, but that's about it. Addy's going to try something, but try is a generous word there. Try, try, try as you may. You're not going to change the outcome of this game. Akron definitively going to take a loss here in this first game. Maybe they can get a goal for the road. Offense building here. It's been great for the momentum and confidence. Bullseye hits 50 50. There ends it. Go. We'll try to take up the side wall, and both will try and take a shot. Hit the ground, and oh, the ball backed up. No one's back. Never mind. Go off the respawn. We'll technically get to it. And BSU will hold Akron scoreless in their first game. I know this is a team that can handle a lot of pressure on the zip side, but one thing that I have to mention is that this Akron team. Team, made it to the grand finals of this very competition last oh. year, but they could see there was some visible kind of back and forth, some little anxiety, and I can't necessarily say I know what's happening in their heads, but this is something that happens on main stage when you've come so far and maybe games don't go your way, in large part due to the fact that these teams are keeping on pressure. It feels like one of those games where when you're in ranked, you can get away with some lazy clears and clear to the sideline. Against Ball, in that game, it shows how small the margin of error is. You clear that kind of weakly in the midfield, and then you turn off Ball Camp, turn it back on, and now suddenly there's another goal in your net. It's hard. You cannot blink or you will miss it. Rocket League, a game that is so incredibly fast-paced. There's a reason why we only get five minutes of action at a time. You make it go longer than that, and, uh, well, you may only get one game in a series. Instead, though, we get best of sevens, which means plenty of time for Akron to adjust. That was not a good game from them, though. I don't think we can sugarcoat this in any capacity. The fact that they were held scoreless through those minutes, and on top of being held scoreless, they barely got out of their half. I think they had one or two true chances at net throughout that entire thing. They need to find a way to start getting some midfield control. Right now, it is BSU all over them in every capacity. Their offense is flawless. They are continuing to put pressure. If you try to get a clear pass midfield, there's somebody there, and even in the 1v1 scenarios where they get breakaways, lead blocker there every time. BSU put it on a clinic in game one. Let's see if maybe Akron can bounce back here in game two. Yeah, and again, we want to reiterate this Akron team, it's not like they're just playing against collegiate teams. This is the first ever roster to make it into the RLCS main event. They had to go through a lot of really quality teams to make that event. So therefore, they know that they can play with the very best of them, but are playing against some of the best collegiate right now. Oh, it's not going to get him. How about Wolfer bar down? Not a great start here for Akron. We talked about how they need to try and flip the momentum. Instead, they just go right back into the blender as usual. All three players getting involved in this one, but it is Wova who will finish off the job. Wova and Oath have combined for, I think, five goals at this point. The two of them have been so lethal on offense. Uh, deflection off kickoff actually might help out Akron as Pat is going to try to send one to Bullseye. The problem is Kristen got demoed, so he's trying to regain Bullseye. Hold it up, looking for a bump. Woba, something slippery there. Not looking for one, but that's past two. How about a demo on the third? Bullseye trying to get back, but he has been targeted. Go for a second. Oh, we don't condone bullying on this stream. I can't have you doing that, bro. You get a demo out of midfield, and immediately look at him head punching for Bullseye on the complete opposite side of the field. This is what we're talking about. BSU so efficient in their offense. It doesn't have have to be flip resets. It doesn't have to be touched off the ceiling. They can get it done in a million of different ways. Right now, they've done it already twice. Let's see if maybe Akron can bounce back and 
nothing went off kick off. And this is the point in the series where I think you might, might want to check on how long after it's been held scoreless. That is a timer that is going to feel more and more heavy on your back and continues to go up in duration. And so when we do see this team notice that, yes, Ball State, they're not necessarily scoring at every single attack because that would be ludicrous if they were, but you notice how they're getting the first shot, it's turned away, and immediately they bump a defender, and here comes another one. God, getting a double. That should go down to the third, but it's only Tristan for a catch. Kind of feels like Akron are starting to get an idea, though, of how this ESU team is playing, and they're getting more chances out of offense. The issue is they still have not converted one. Like you said, they've been held scoreless for about six minutes now, and although that may only sound like a short amount of time, that's over an entire game. And for every minute that kicks on further, like you also mentioned, it is confidence that will go away from Akron. Patty, though, clearly confident in his challenges. A flip reset, and demo in the corner. Tristan, time, space, and 50 that I think he was expecting to come a little bit later. The immediate challenge out of Gut is going to catch him off guard and send him this view to get another offense. Uh, genetic marble, no fear in that <laughs> brain right there. Charged in with no hesitation when Tristan is trying to fake challenge him, and that's really what you need out of your defenders. You trust the rotation, you know, even if you dive on in and get beat, someone's going to be able to cover your back, and they're going to do more than that because it looks like Patty trying to set up an air dribble. Didn't quite wrangle on the first one, and another demo by Ball State just throwing a wrench in these Akron rotations. How about a redirect, if not for Bullseye? That could have been a third. I like what we're seeing here at Akron, though. They're a lot more prepared for the shots that are going cross court here for me as you there. Not caught off guard by them nearly as much as before and they're getting more sustained offense they're actually living on that or on that ESU side for at least a handful of seconds in comparison to before where we see a single challenge and there goes the end of their offense the issue though as good as they are playing on offense right now they're still down by two goals they've got half the game left to try and turn this one around and as they launch into yet another offense there is a chance but bullseye doesn't judge that one correctly he's expecting a 50 it doesn't come and there's no touch you can even make and this is where you know you can use those fake challenges to your or maximal effect this from Ball State. You can dive on in, you can make sure that they know that there's always a threat that it might get a deflection. And the fact that Akron has already been countered on it, that also has to be weighing heavy on them, which is why I think they're trying to go high for these high percentage plays for these air dribbles. Whether or not they're able to direct it on target is a whole nother thing, because right now, just getting through this first layer of the onion that is the Ball State defense is a whole nother question right now. They keep on trying with these double commits now. It might get past one, but not the second. Midfield battle continue to ensue here, but it kind of feels like Akron at this point aren't really getting much more progress than what they started in the game with them. It feels like, like we said, you know, they're, they're getting better and better. They're finding resistance against the SU, but they're still not finding shots. This could be a chance, if not for both, getting to the ball well before his opponent. Now getting a chance the other way as well. He's headhunting, looking for demos. It's going to mess up Tristan, but it won't mess up Bullseye. He will start another offense. 90 seconds to go. Akron do have a chance here, but they have to score soon. Oh, get past uh -oh. one. That is completely open for the man with the flippery set. Not going to find it, but that is the terror that you strike. You can see it in my voice because I was not sure if Akron had that one covered. If that's not off target, then you really just have to hope that the follow through isn't there either. But as you can see, Ball State, they're not concerned. They're not diving in. They know they have the job accomplished so long as the next 60 seconds go their way. Earn as much of this clock as you can, BSU. Akron are starting to find ways into offense, and you don't want to give them a chance to at least get that singular goal to start the rally back here in the second game. I'm going to say this game is going in favor of BSU regardless. I don't think Ball State are a team to drop two goals in this quick a succession, especially considering Akron have had very little chances on offense whatsoever. But I don't want them to necessarily just take their foot off the gas. you got to keep this aggression up. You have to keep making Akron second-guess themselves. The big challenge is the hyper-aggressive offense over that instant staple for the way that you were playing. With 30 seconds to go, as much as I, like said, have this game in your bag, you still want to keep the pressure on. Patty trying yet again. He has yet to fight oh much, and again, Woba getting right in the way and getting rewarded for it. Defense simply cannot handle that speed. And this is why Woba was the player that they kept through these incredible changes on this PSU team. A lot of people questioned that move initially. They were going, really? This is the one you want to keep? Um, this is why everybody knew Woba had potential. The team knew it. The university knew it. The coaches knew it. They all knew that this player had the potential to be one of the best at CRO and the coach at Rocket League has to offer. And he's proving that now here at CECC. Shout out to BSU. You've had two dominant games in a row. You've had two shutout games in a row. Taco, the current scoreline as we exit out of the second and go into the third. Seven to zero. Goal differential in favor of Ball State. I would like to issue an editor's note 
two, this will not be a one-sided series. Because right now, let's just say we're waiting and checking our sources. This is otherworldly right now from Ball State because we're not seeing, obviously, Brazils. We're not seeing these incredibly high scorelines. It's mostly just seeing the momentum. Akron, I will say, congrats to them for being able to move on forward and get a lot more presence on offense. But as you notice, they're scanning left and right, getting 50s in front of nets. But it's been a while since they've actually just had a setup shot rotation out. It feels like they're diving in so heavy to make something out of it that it allows Ball State to counter. And I think right now, Ball State, they're sitting back absorbing it. They trust in the rotation. Why shouldn't you? It's looking so incredibly clean. It's not only clean, it's cohesive. That's one of the biggest things for me is the whole team is playing around each other so brilliantly. Look at this last game. Three goals, two assists. Uh, fun fact, it's actually three assists. They don't count demos as assists in this game, but Oates demo, the double demo out of midfield, is actually what got that third goal. At this point, they have one single goal unassisted through the seven that they have scored here, and the only one was the kickoff goal from, goal from Ova. Otherwise, if they are building up offenses, they are using every single piece of their puzzle. Three-headed Hydra approach that, at this point, you cut off the head. It's not just one head pops up, it's like 28, and you don't know which one's even going to try and bite you. Yeah, and you're certainly feeling snake bitten at this point, because it's honestly, the Akron defense looked a lot better that game. Yeah. There's a lot more earned goals from a Ball State, as uh, you have to expect, but when we get into game three this is where you have kind of run out of those goodwill interpretations of your play you can't really just sit back and say well you know we weren't quite prepared because now you know what's up and what you need to do and you need to lock that down Gah. nearly gave him 15 degrees to work with and he almost made him pay you can't keep starting games like this akron big issue is that we're talking about you need to flip the momentum if you just keep on giving bsu these early goals it feels like momentum's never going to shift at this point good thing is they held off at least a couple of chances I don't know if Patty recognized how open that backfield was. He popped that into the corner rather than try and take possession. I actually think it would have forced all of BSU to rush into the backfield and given a sustained offense for Akron. Instead, they're back into their half, trying to start it up. Bullseye, good 50. Anybody there? Of course Oath is. And of course he gets a pass out to midfield and ends the offense already. Now, I do like that aggression, though, from Bullseye and Patty. They are really trying to duo up in this attacking third, which is something you typically see Tristan do, but he's actually more than capable of getting the young guns kind of get forward and generate something. Tristan had someone on the backboard. He calls his own number. He's only to run into the wall. That is Ball State yet again. We're right back into that Akron half, and I will say, you can see Akron's getting a bit more confident, a bit more decisive. Oh! As they beat one, how about a second gun? As usual, is the savior. Wova is next up for another one to the corner. I can I understand why Bullseye didn't want to challenge there. A 50 50 could just shot it all the way to the other side. To the other side, other side of net. That one's going to ping off bar to bar. I get it, Akron. You don't want to overcommit here. You've seen BSU throw in a hesitation, throw in a fake here or there, and if you don't win the 50, it all falls apart. Good example as two players go up, Bova leaves the ball, and it's immediately BSU possession. Ball State are playing their opponents like a fiddle. They've got them read like a textbook they've studied for years at this point. And although Akron are definitely starting to find further resistance to this play style, they are still without a goal through 12 minutes of play. At the very least, they know that they're not losing this game up until something goes on through. Tristan still getting plenty of touch on that one. Go with a put back. It should not trouble Tristan, but again, this clears going right down the middle, making me real nervous. Luckily, Ball State decided to rotate deep on that last one, and now Oath going from the deep, trying to carry it on forward, trying to get the air dribble bump to pave the way. Something that really has entered the meta more and more over time, and Collegiate is no exception. I love seeing Akron finally get aggressive out of midfield. That challenge out of Bullseye is what we need, and out of Tristan, too. All right, good. Akron has said we've had enough. You guys are done controlling midfield. We are done giving you offense after offense unimpeded. He might give Oath a double flip reset, but he does nothing with it, and he won't do anything with this pass in either. Duh, did try to go for that one, and Wolf out of midfield will keep the pressure on. But this is already a much different game, not only from the midfield presence, but from the scoreline as well. Every other game we have played, by the time we get to the back half, Akron is down by a handful of goals. I do like that from Bullseye, carrying it down because that opens things up for Tristan, the main man, getting the 50 out on a lead. Demo, the third, is not quite there. They had to wrangle all the way from the center to the sideline, which is where the ball still resides. Bullseye beating over the top. Tristan should have that one, but he tries to go inside on Guh. Guh shuts the door. 
And unfortunately, the door shut again out at midfield here. Even with a player in net just messing around with all of the PSU defense, it's not going to be enough for Akron to not have to get forced into their own half and restart the offense. Good thing for them, moves in their favor and momentum in their favor. It feels like Akron have actually had the majority of offense in this game, and I can tell, I can tell you that is a surprise statement to come out of my mouth. The only issue, though, is PSU. They've proven. You give them even one shot, and they'll do something with it. Thus far, Akron has helped them to scoreless here in this third game, but don't keep giving them chances. Don't let Oak get another double flip reset. It won't end well. You can see there's oh, no. to Tristan. Oh! That one is going to glance off of the post. Wova, not a double off the backboard. He's going to the ceiling. Leaves it for Gu, and it looks like Bullseye has that one covered as well. Oath, going to get it past one. More than enough to get back to it. The pass, Gu, lurking, waiting. How, where is Wova? He might have to take over, but Akron seemingly able to touch it away. But as you notice, it is still not out of the half. Feels like the pressure now for both sides is starting to mount because it's neither team wanting to overcommit to a ball. You're starting to see it. PSU waiting for Akron to actually get the first touch here. Akron doing the exact same thing. The teams have finally found a level of respect where they understand both teams are locked in and ready to play. The only issue for Akron is it happened here in the third game. They lose this one, a reverse sweep necessary. So I gotta say, this is a necessary win from Akron, and that's why they're looking for demos. That's why they're looking for block, and that's why they're looking to retreat. Wofa not gonna even have to touch it. Oh, gets a freebie. And the all-out offense for Akron comes back to bite them. It is so hard when you're teetering on the edge of your nerves to not lean a bit too far forward on offense. A counterattack as Boy Ball State has really shown they cannot be messed with. And that's exactly why they everyone knows their roles. A demo on first and then immediately turns off ball cans, focus on the last defender. They could not even get close. Akron, Akron, Akron. You have 20 seconds to try and turn this around, find your first overtime of the series. Their first goal of the series. Folks, a perfect sweep in Rocky League is not just rare, it almost never happened. I think I've passed this one in my entire life. And at this point, unless we see a zero second goal here, Akron will be one game away from having that unfortunate reality forced upon them. Especially as Oak is not diving off his teammate. He's trying to, but Go will spike it down. That is eight goals unanswered. 15 minutes without a single goal from Akron. And Bass, you and I were asked prior to this event even beginning, who do you think is probably the favorite to take this whole thing? We said Ball State. Hopefully everybody in the audience can tell why now. It's not only that obviously the players are some of the best you'll see, but as you can tell, it's always like they have it covered. I don't really know if their voice even hits a certain hertz or a certain volume at a certain point because they're never in a situation where it's like, oh, I don't know if I have that. Please cover me. I'm low on boost. It's always saying, no, I have that. I'm behind you. I'm on your left, past middle, whatever. And you can tell that even in that close game where Akron is getting more shots, granted four, compared to the overwhelming 14 from Ball State, is saying, yeah, you're slightly back more into it, but even with Akron looking more confident, more aggressive, it all comes crashing down because inevitably they know they have to take a risk and sometimes it doesn't pay off. That's the issue. At a certain point, you have to do something unexpected. And if the other team reads that play and isn't quite caught off guard, it's immediately countered on. You can tell right now Akron's locking in. You can see their coach down at the end there. Huntley's just kind of sitting with the boys trying to be like, hey, what's going on? What, what's happening here? Because he knows, we know, everybody knows that Akron should be more competitive in this series. 15 minutes without a goal is not usual. Akron fans, you need to get loud. You need to get proud. Your team needs you to support them here to keep this series alive. They need a goal. They're starting off with offense here in game four. Let's see if it pays off. Well, it seems like they, all these players, they started today in the pit playing these games, but they're very much still in a trench right now. It is all out warfare for Ball State playing against them. We've seen some demos kind of rain on down. Oh. Akron gets incredibly close to the start of game four here, but not quite enough. And almost, it really comes down to just taking that risk on selective rotations. How many times have we seen a ball linger in front of Ball State? We're waiting for the third, but they're back getting boosted or even worse because they're recovering from a demo. The unfortunate thing is, they're a little bit shell-shocked at this point here. They saw that not pay off for them in the last game, and now they don't ever want to send that third man upfield. I can't blame them because you've seen how incredibly efficient this Ball State offense is at transitioning in almost a millisecond. Good example here. That's the first goal. Oh, it's going to find it. As we 
speak about it, they prove exactly what we're talking about. And just watching the background, the trust that Oak really shows in his teammate here. The 50 is not even happening yet. The deflection isn't even happening. That's not even a 50, that's just a hard read, and Oath is waiting, knowing, hey, I know my teammates, he's gonna put that right on a platter for me. He not only put it on a platter, he literally said, hey, um, here's another one. Fun fact, Oath is responsible for more than half of the goals for his team at this point, both through assists and goals that he just scored by himself. That's his fifth goal of the series. And I think he's got, what, two assists? Technically one that isn't credited, but still an assist that he gets. Dude has been all over the place. We have called him the carry for this BSU team for a very long time, but the reality is it would only be a carry if he's doing this by himself. All three BSU players are absolutely standing up here today, and it might send Akron home with an unfortunate loss, a perfect sweep on the horizon if Akron can't turn this around. Patty not really getting the clear he wants, but that deflection from Tristan means that Bullseye might be able to wrangle on, on that one. It's not going to be the most charitable of bounces. Uh -oh. Oath with the deflection with that orange path you can see, but now it's all blue because Wova is going off, chasing the ball left and right, and this is why you get kind of in the cyclone of your opponents and so hard to break out, which is why these air dribbles mean so much. Patty, a surprising amount of power, but still not enough. Tristan's touch only going to the corner. And he's got no boost to work with there. The corner completely taken from him, so it's a full retreat here for Akron, who aren't even able to play defense that they wanted. That should have been a green team for Patty, but 50-50 and the demo afterwards now can give PSU some extra offense to work with. Oath, though, has to pop this into his own half, and he's got Bullseye behind him, who's still trying to get the offense started. Halfway through this game, Akron, you need to get a goal, and they're hunting for it so aggressively. At this point, I think they just have to sort of Hail Mary it. You have to send the third man on every one of these plays. No, particularly because that one goal game I mean, is not any, necessarily anything in comms. Anyone's going to be freaking out, hyperventilating over, but with every second that ticks by as we have crossed half time in this match point game for Ball State, you know that they realize that they have to start pushing. You can't always rely on the mistake or go for these demos. You have to really just send the house. Hopefully you win your 50s. And of course that comes with its own risks. Yes, it's only one goal, but what happens if you do overcommit on a risk and then you have to give up another one? Two minutes to play. Akron finding themselves back against the wall in really one of the toughest series I've ever seen. We knew BSU or the Kryptonite from many different teams throughout the collegiate space. I did not think that the Kryptonite was going to completely shut down, which I guess is Superman in this case. Akron truly struggling to find themselves any sort of chances here on net in these final two minutes. Chance here though, Patty, 50 in the corner, Duh, gonna follow it up though. And although Tristan is lurking, they're still struggling to even get this one center and find a shot. And Woba is just standing tall with these 50 after 50. The back pass to Patty, oh wanting to work out as he's off the field. Tristan's still late to it, and that should roll actually to the respawning Patty from the sidewall. Dunn not able to get to it, but Oath will as all these players continually getting set packing back to their own corner to respawn. They're in the shredder right now. Multiple players getting sent to the scrap heap at Akron over and over again, getting demoed by various players on BSU. And they might even get scored on again, if not for Oath, not winning the 50. And now there's a player downfield. Tristan can't get the touch he's looking for. And the best chance so far for Akron falls by the wayside. A couple not, uh, times now, Akron is in a great position, but you can look at the bottom of the screen and realize they have 10 or fewer boost when they go for it. It's just not enough, and that's part of playing a fast rotation on defense. You're burning through a lot of your resources, and therefore, when you do get out, it really is just the self-repeating problem. Yeah, we can get out, but for what? We get one clear, and then we have to watch it get cleared right back into our face. 40 seconds, and Oath trying to put a stamp on this one, a bow on it, if you will, because this game more or less seems like it's been a gift, but Tristan always lurking. Bullseye into Patty, and yet Oath steps up again for deflection. They just won't let the third man get a shot every single time Akron are sending the entire team cards on the table and it's all aces and still somehow they are losing. This is the best offense we've seen from Akron and apparently it is still not enough. 20 seconds to go, they just need one to send it to at least an OT, but if they can get a second here for BSU, that'll shut this series down. One last charge downfield, a doink all the way from mid, and Oath who's back and it goes on the backboard, he's got no boost. Is anybody going to challenge Tristan? Pops it up and can't keep it up. BSU! Complete the perfect sweep to send them to finals. This isn't just a statement. It's a press conference where they're screaming into the mic. You dare underrate us. It's one thing to sweep in a semi. How about a perfect one? No goals allowed. Ball State, they're not here to play games. This is a business trip.
The full name for Ball State is Ball State Mint. This is a statement going into the finals. They see Boise State. They see a Boise that they have played before. And they say, we ain't coming the same way we did last time. We are not coming into this one nearly as unprepared. We are ready. We got a game plan. And that game plan is going to be right in your face tomorrow. Oh boy, Taco. Oh, we have set ourselves up for quite the grand finals here at CCC. And you can see it on Gus's face. They're walking back, almost shaking his head with a smile, knowing, yeah, they just put in work, and that's exactly what you practice for. When you go into scrims, when you go into your replay review, you know what you have to do, but still, things get in the way. Things happen. You're not able to predict. The thing that blew me the most away is that there was so much trust, so much confidence in all these players, so much swagger almost now they're playing, that the amount of times Akron decided, let's go to the solo play, because they're all top 1%, top 1% of 1% percent type mechanics and yet you can see them pre getting pre-jumped you're seeing fakes coming in and then ball state just saying i'm not falling for any of that they'll blow right through the challenge and with plays like that if you're not doing something really out of the box you're just going to keep getting shovel getting dug into your grave all the dirt piling on top of you it's so tough to escape from so i don't really blame Akron in that one still a valiant effort from them they kept it close at times at this point all we can really do is see if boise even has an idea of how to shut this team down I will say this much. The only reason I think that we're really going to see a much closer final, well, obviously, if Boise even scores goal, it's going to be technically a closer final at this point. But these are probably two teams that have the most similar play style of anybody here. Boise has been known to be one of the most offensively aggressive teams in the history of Collegiate Rocket League. They kind of invented the meta of pre-jumping off the ceiling and having this hyper-aggressive offense. Originally, it didn't work. Then they pick up their new players in Preston and Woozy, and all of a sudden, their coach Waiton has found a way to work this out. Question is, will it work out tomorrow? We'll have to wait and see. That's all for the semi-final. Let's send it to Hercules on stage. She's got some interviews with the Ball State team. Everybody give it up for Ball State sweeping Akron! Wova, did you expect a 4-0 sweep like that? I mean, no. We, we play Akron a lot. They're a very good team, but just on the day, we're a lot better than them, so it feels good. It does feel good. Dude, you guys have had an incredible land run here at CECC. You haven't lost a single series yet. You're officially headed to the Grand Finals. And I believe this is your first CECC as well? Yes. Very first CECC, so I'm very excited. This has been a lovely event, and it's very huge, so a little nerve-wracking, but it's been a lot of fun, so... We're super excited to have you here. And of course, on the other end of things, guys, if you don't know too fast, you got to put your hands together. This is the man that makes the plays for the team. You are low key a goat in the Rocket League scene, man. Have your time to shine. But I asked you before, I said, did you expect it? And you said, no, not in that fashion. But as it was happening, were you just kind of letting them do their thing? Or was there anything you tweaked at any point in time? No, not really. A lot of it just came from preparation before the series. Whenever it was mid-series, the guys kind of knew what we wanted to do um, from the get-go. So once we knew that things were going well, it was kind of just um, letting them do their thing, you know, hyping them up. But no real changes at that point. Solid play style. Now I got to ask, do you guys feel pretty prepared to go up against, I believe it's Boise State that's waiting for you in the grand finals? Ooh, he said, give me the mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we played Boise in nationals last semester, and it was a fluke, fluke, fluke for them. Um, but I'm very happy to get a revenge on them tomorrow. So very excited for that. What do you guys got to say to that? I see you right there, Dirtho. He said peace. All right. We'll see you both later on.